What's going on engineers? In this video we're going to look at Linux file permissions and also directory file permissions. And then we're going to look at a lesser known thing called file attributes that not a ton of people know about. This is an important topic because it affects everything from user access rights on the computer all the way up until processes running in the cloud, making sure they have access to the resources they need. So let's just jump in and see what's going on with all this. So you pop open your terminal for the first time, you run ls-l and you say, what the heck is all of this stuff? So let's break down each piece of this. I copied over to my editor and I annotated each part. Just for completeness, I annotated all the parts, the size and bytes, last modified date, and file directory name. Those are pretty self-explanatory, but the ones that we're particularly interested in is this special designator, the permissions, the owner, and the group. So basically, this part of it right here. Other than this little two here, this entire part deals with the permissions of the file or directory. So we'll start with the special designator. A special designator has a number of different things that it could be. However, the two that are applicable to us right now are the dash, which is for a file, meaning that it has no designator. Things on a Linux system are files by default. And then D is for directory. There's about six or seven other special designators, but none of them are applicable to file permissions or directories. For the permissions, it's going to be the next nine characters. And in those nine characters, it's broken up into three groups of three. One for the owner, one for the group, and one for others. And then in each group of three, it's broken down into individual things. One for read, one for write, and one for execute. So basically what we have is read for owner, write for owner, execute for owner, read for group, write for group, execute for group, read for others, write for others, and execute for others. And then to determine whether or not a permission is granted or not, if there's a dash, it means it's not. And if there's an RW or X, it means it is. So let's look at each of these and see what they mean. So for chase.gif, we have RW dash, RW dash, R dash dash. So what this says is read and write for owner, read and write for group, and then just read for others. And then for Linux.mp4, it's the exact same thing. For the PIX directory, it's read, write, and execute for owner, read, write, and execute for group, and then just read and execute for others. And if you're wondering how to change these permissions, don't worry, we'll be doing that shortly. So you may have asked yourself, well, if there's a permission for owner and there's a permission for group, then, well, who's the owner and who's the group? And well, that's the next two things that come here. The first name you see is going to be the owner, and the second name you see is going to be the group. And then for others, that permission is going to apply to anybody that is not the owner or part of the group. So now that you understand the layout of the permissions and what RWX is, now it's time to talk about what RWX means for files and what RWX means for directories, because they are different. So starting with files, if you have the read permission on a file, you're able to view the contents of that file. If you have the write permission on a file, you're able to modify the contents of that file. If you have the execute permission on a file, then you're able to actually run that file as an executable. Now onto directories, if you have the read permission on a directory, you'll be able to list the files within the directory. If you have the write permission on a directory, you're gonna be able to actually add and delete files to and from the directory. And note that I said add or delete files. It's a common misconception that if you take away write permissions on a file, that prevents a person from deleting that file, when in fact that's not the case. A user can delete a file from a directory even if they don't have write permissions, as long as the directory has write permissions for them. And if you have execute permissions on the directory, you're able to actually change directory into that directory and access the files. For setting permissions, this is done with the chmod command. And there's a couple of formats. We're going to talk about two of them. One is the octal format, and the other is the class plus or minus permission format. You'll likely use a blend of both of these. You'll want to use the octal format when you want to just set specific permissions on a file. You can use the shorter format if you want to just add or modify certain permissions on a file. So if you want to set read, write, and execute for owner, read and execute for group, and read and execute for others, you'd simply do chmod 755 and then the name of the file. But what does 755 mean? And how does 755 translate to this permission set? It's actually easier than it seems. The long version of how this works is seven is converted to binary, five is converted to binary, the other five is converted to binary, and then whichever bits are a one sets the permission. So to write a seven in binary, it would be 111, to write a 5 in binary, it would be 101, and to write another 5 would also be 101. And you'll notice that this lines up nicely with our permissions. Everywhere there's a 1, the permission is set. Everywhere there's a 0, there's just a dash. The simpler way to do this is just to think of read having a value of 4, write having a value of 2, and execute having a value of 1, then simply just add up all the numbers for the permissions you want. So if you want read, write, and execute, do 4 plus 2 plus 1. If you want just read and execute, do 4 plus 1, which gives you 5. If you want read and write, 
but not execute, just do 4 plus 2, which gives you 6. And each of these examples follows the format. So chmod666 would be our, would be read-write for owner, group, and others. chmod700 is read-write and execute for owner, and then no permissions for group or others. And then, of course, chmod000 is no permissions for anybody. And then chmod777 is full permissions for everybody. The second format is nice when you want to add or remove certain permissions. It's still done with chmod, but the first thing you'll write is the character that designates what you want to change. So u is for owner, g is for group, o is for others, and then a is for all three. You'll then write either a plus or minus, depending on if you want to add or remove that permission, and then you'll specify the actual permission to add or remove. So in this case, u plus r says add read for owner. g minus r removes read from group, O plus R adds read to others, and then A minus W removes write from everyone. Before we move on to file attributes, it's worth pointing out that there is a special user on the system called root, and root is able to do anything. It can set and remove any permission, it can access any file or directory, it can do all the things. There's very few situations that would prevent root from taking some action on a file or directory, and actually one such thing we'll see in a second with file attributes. And last thing we're going to look at real quick is file attributes, and these are things that not a lot of people know. We can actually check the file attributes of something by using ls-adder, which will show us the list of all the files and then their attributes. If we want to get a more human-readable view, we can do ls-adder-l. We're going to look at three such attributes today. If you want to look at the rest of the attributes, you can do man ch adder, and then you can see all the documentation for each of the attributes. To set an attribute, it's done a lot like the permissions. You use ch adder, and then you do plus or minus, and then the attribute letter, and then the file you want to set the attribute on. So if you wanted to make a file immutable, you would do ch adder plus i file.txt. If you wanted to remove the immutable attribute, you would do ch adder minus i file.txt. And then attributes do a couple different things. Like the a attribute, for instance, will make a file append only. That way you can add contents to it, but you can't take contents out of it. The i attribute makes it immutable, meaning that you can't move it, can't rename it, can't delete it, can't touch it, can't do anything with it. Another cool attribute is the s attribute, the so-called secure delete attribute, basically meaning that if you delete a file that holds the s attribute, it will also zero the blocks that that file was stored on. Which is pretty neat, because as some of you may know, once you delete a file, you haven't actually removed it from your hard drive, you simply removed the reference. So we'll just set this to immutable. We'll say chase.gif will be immutable. So we'll do chadder plus i chase.gif, and then this is a root only thing, so I'll have to use sudo. After I do that, I can do ls adder. You can see now it has the i attribute, and I can do dash l, and it will say that it's immutable here as well. There's now nothing I can do to this file. I can't remove it. I can't truncate it. I can't do anything. That's really all there is to file directory permissions and file attributes. Hopefully I was able to clear some confusion on all of that. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please make sure you leave them below in the comments. And other than that, hope to see you on the next video. Take care.